What's up everybody, welcome back to another Logic Pro X Quick Tip. I am Clormo and as promised, I'm bringing you more examples for vinyl scratching effects using Alchemy. You may have noticed that I didn't put any videos the last two weeks. I wasn't feeling that motivated to do anything. A lot of stuff at my day job and then when I got out of work, I just blah, didn't want to do anything. So I said, okay, let's take a little little break so i took a few days uh, of vacation just to make sure that i put a better quality video like you deserve but i want to keep this as short as possible so let's go into the logic pro x uh screen i have here this alchemy showing that first track and i have three tracks same things so it's going to be alchemy obviously and let's just take a listen to each one first sound sound Sound, 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 sound. So there you have some three other examples. So I'm gonna show you the pre, uh, I mean the parameters and the curves for the modulation that you need to put together to come up with these examples that I'm showing. But again, just as a recap of the previous video, I show you how to go about and do some multi-segmented modulation and curves and achieve this vinyl scratching effect. I told you that in the previous video that you wanted to have a sample for one source and then for subsequent sources you wanted to have an actual sample with a vinyl scratch sound like you can find on the internet in Google. But you actually don't need that. You don't need the vinyl sound scratching effect to achieve the same result. I don't have it here. Sound. So that is just using the sample, the vocal sample in this case that I'm using in Alchemy. What changed? Nothing changed. The, what I did last week in that, in that video is also another way that you can achieve the same effect. And if you're going for realistic, that's also a good way. It's just that, that if you don't have like the patience to go and create this, or you are still a little bit lost in the beginning and you don't have that... Um, savviness with alchemy yet you can do that other one because the sample sound for the vinyl scratch is going to kind of mask what you do in the modulation so that's good for 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 from a beginnings or from a beginner's standpoint i should say so it's still valid now if you want to take it to the next level then all you need to do is just have your sample the same way loaded like i said in, in the last video you can go to the edit, make sure that you, your start and end points for the sample are wherever you want them. In this case, in this example are there. I'm going to change it in a little bit. And then just have your tuning. In this case, I prefer the coarse tuning. You can do the fine tuning if you want. And your position. They're going to have the same modulation or multi-segmented modulation attached to them. As a recap, how you do that, you right click on your on the knob that you want to modulate, add modulation, and then just multi-segment envelope. In this case, I have number one is the one that I'm using for both. What's good is that the modulation for each knob lets you have a different depth, which obviously makes a lot of sense because you may move this knob up and down and this one different way in the re in real life. So the program is smart enough to do that. And it would be a shame if it didn't. So the depth is the the thing or the actual parameter that makes this is the, the secret ingredient. So you can have some multi-segment curve and all that stuff. And if your depth is just a tiny bit um, out of the range for that sample that makes it sound more realistic, you're going to have something that may sound good to you and for many people, but may not sound as realistic it's still it's up to taste it's whatever you want to do it i'm not telling you that you can't make the depth something different uh, or extreme but keep that in mind you know that if you're not like achieving something that to you sounds realistic it's the depth the depth is what's going to give you the, the 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 kick you know that real spiciness there for the realistic sounding vinyl scratch effect so what I have here is just um, this curve. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to replay again that and pay attention to the playhead. Sound. Sound. So for the tuning, obviously, the play we don't have any reference 
on the spectrogram and that's because it's just a pitch right so it's going up and down uh, through this modulation so the pitch is going like through that curve if i go to the position though it's doing the same thing but then pay attention to the sample here in the waveform editor and, and the screen lcd screen and then the playhead sound sound so imagine that playhead playhead is like the needle so that's going doing that so that's what gives you that vinyl scratch effect and it's gonna be dependent obviously on this curve so for this example this is a curve that i have but also like i said the depth is gonna make this sound different so if i make the full depth sound sound that may sound a little bit more realistic to you which is okay sound if i make it less sound. obviously it's not gonna go through the whole sound sound like it's gonna scratch only like that s in the beginning and then when it gets to the final point obviously the complete sample plays and also the position like i said you can you can make this bad maybe yeah maybe the end point didn't have to change but then i make this full sound, sound. and then you go so all the depth and then playing with the sample start and end points it's what really controls all of that the curve itself it's important obviously because otherwise you wouldn't be modulating the sources but make sure that you understand that concept of depth in relation to that modulation that you have and in my opinion you should not sync this to the tempo to make sure that you achieve a more realistic sound but after you have done it maybe you want then to sync it maybe that uh, there's a, a particular scenario that you want to do that but i would work for create to create the, the, the initial curve i would work outside the syncing because it's going to be difficult it's just going to snap to the the different bars and it's not going to let you do this smooth transitions and stuff also of important note is that the last point that you have should be at the zero percentage on the y because that's what it's going to tell alchemy like okay when you get to that point that's outside the modulation curve then play the sample if i have it like this notice what happens sound so it kind of like hangs up where the needle was after the modulation ended and then we get to the next point the sample plays maybe that's something that you want to do that again up to taste up to creativity sake but if you are if you encounter kind of that thing and you say oh this this doesn't sound right maybe it's just that just that the point where you want you're expecting the sample to play is not at zero in the y direction pretty simple so now i'm just going to show you the other two just give you show you what i did as far as the modulation itself so that you replicate that sound 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 kind of see the depth there and semitone settings for the depth and for the position depth of modulation this is what i have for the sample again i can make this something different sound that's going to give me a different result sound Sound, sound. In my opinion, that's simple. There's a reason why this have numbers. I'm gonna tell you right at the end why. And then, last but not least, let me show you this one. Sound, sound, sound. So that's like going the the pitch is going up a little bit, then dies down in, inside these two curves, then kind of builds up again, but slowly sound. to the same one in the beginning. And pretty simple in my opinion or at least manageable to do again dealing with the multi-segment in my opinion is the only way to achieve this because it lets you as far as i know add infinite points and then smooth out the curves and the transitions for different points and that's what's actually giving you that special type of modulation that in turn in combination with the position and tuning of the sample create that uh, vinyl scratching effect so if you don't have the patience to do this i understand because it's not is it, it takes patience you you may see like oh that's so easy but it took me some time to actually come with stuff that was closer to more real things you can do whatever you want but 
just in the just in me trying to tell you a realistic that were realistic then i try to be a little more precise to be realistic but you can do whatever you want obviously whatever suits your needs and the reason why these guys here have these numbers is pretty simple so i'm going to tell you right away before i end the video is because for those of you that don't have that same patience or feel a little bit lost with alchemy similar like i did with the last video putting the sample scratch sound will mask that a little bit but I am going to release a set of 50 presets for Alchemy that not only include these, but other 47 ones that are going to give you realistic sounding vinyl scratch effects or as realistic as possible or close to the real thing so that then you can go into the depth and other parameters and change them to whatever you want and save them and even build upon those or just have them ready. But those took a lot of effort and they take a lot of effort to put together so i'm not gonna really give them for free so i'm gonna put them on my web page at a cost of just five bucks so if that's of interest to you and you just want to build without having to do it yourself then i will appreciate it if you pay me a visit and buy that and and download those presets it's gonna I'm gonna appreciate it a lot. Obviously helps me to keep this whole operation sustainable. So I'm not asking for much. If you compare the other option would be to buy MIDI gear and turntables. So we're talking about potentially thousands of dollars versus five bucks for just putting some presets in Alchemy already and then having you add those effects to your beats and your music or whatever you wanna do it. I think it's worth it again if you feel like that's something that adds value to what you want to do if you sa if that sounds interest to interesting to you i'm not saying like go ahead and do it otherwise i'm not going to do any more videos that's not what i'm saying and either way this video tutorial and the last video also give you how to do it right so you can put together your own things for free you know i'm, I'm giving you those two options just to expand the library four or five bucks before I finish and before I forget a lot of thanks to all of those new subscribers and all the subscribers that have stayed with me since day one, finally went uh, above that 500 subscriber mark. There's only one reason why I wanna wanted to reach that goal and it's because I wanna just reach that thousand uh, subscriber count and the 4,000 uh, watch time hours in a year so that I can gain back my uh, partnership with YouTube so I can at least get something out of, uh, of these videos. You know, it's, it's kind of discouraging. As, uh, and I already have a video about that, so I'm not gonna go here and complain, but thanks to all of those that have subscribed. If you found value in this video and you're watching me for the first time, then I invite you to subscribe to my channel, Clormo. If you have any questions on this tutorial, previous tutorials or the alchemy presets pack that I'm going to release, then just leave a comment here with your questions and I'm going to make my best to answer them as quickly as possible. If not, you can always feel free to send me an email to Colomo Industries at gmail.com and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, people.